Hey Pretty Girl Club, so I wanted to tell just some random story times talking about um, skin tone and ethnicity perception. So for those of you who are new to this channel, the way that I like to do this channel is kind of like a think tank. I don't consider myself to be the person that decides, you know, what your skin tone is, what your features are. I can only speak from my experience and what I also like to do is have fun votes like I have polls. Oh, by the way, I just did a poll on what hair textures you guys think are pedestalized, whether it's 4A and above, 3C and above, or 3B and above. So be sure to vote in that poll if you haven't already because that's going to help me with my editing for the texturism series. But I wanted to talk about this topic because I've noticed that whenever we talk about skin tone on here, sometimes people, they try to argue and be like, well, so-and-so is not light skin. And have you ever noticed that there's a heavy gatekeeping of who's light skin, but I don't see the same energy about who's dark skin or who's the darkest. I don't see people saying you're not that dark skin and then trying to compare them to another dark skin person. Um, but one thing that we have to remember is that skin tone is subjective and I'm going to talk about some examples of that today. Another thing that a lot of people will not admit is that people take your facial features and your hair texture into consideration when they are deciding what skin tone nickname to call you. So this is why I don't identity police on here. I kind of feel like deep down inside you know what your experiences have been you know um, how your skin tone is perceived. And so that's why I'm not the type that really argues back and forth. Like so-and-so person is not light skin. I mean, there are a lot of people who I have felt personally who I wouldn't have called light skin, but if they are from an area where they are considered that, or maybe they're considered dark skin, or maybe in their hometown, they have that phrase brown skin. If that's how they perceive themselves and they feel like their life experience is aligned with that, I can't argue with people's experiences. By the way, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe to the other Exotical channels. Um, if you go into the comment section and just click on some of the profile names down there, you'll find so many other channels that talk about this. But I want to start off by talking about my background and kind of where I grew up. So I'm not going to name exact states because for privacy reasons, but I have lived on the western part of the United States, so I've lived on the west coast, on the east coast, and in the south. And so I do feel like I have good knowledge. Oh, and for each of those three, I've lived in each of those places for about four years minimum. So I do feel like I have a good range of experiences when it comes to skin tone perceptions. So when I was on the west coast, like the western side of the United States, um, I noticed that there was more one dropping. So biracial people or multiracial people, um, they were more so one dropped into blackness. That was just my experience. Another thing that I noticed on the West Coast was that people didn't talk as much about skin tone. They didn't say phrases like light skin or dark skin. Um, that was not as common of a, of a phrase because there were simply not enough black people for there to be anyone to compare you to. So as far as where I was, there were majority uh, white people or non-black people. There were majority white people and different variations of Asian communities. So whether it's Korean, Japanese, Chinese, uh, lots of Pacific Islanders, lots of Filipinos and stuff like that. So the whole light skin or dark skin phrase, that was not really a thing. Pretty much if you had some sort of black features or if you had some sort of black hair texture, then people would call you black, whether you were biracial or not. Uh, that was just my experience. And if you guys go to my other story time where I talk about how my skin tone identity was created, you will see that there were a few times when I was younger that people brought up skin tone, but it wasn't brought up enough for it to become a nickname. When I was on the West Coast, people would ask me more what my ethnicity was. So I remember um, there were a lot of Pacific Islanders. There were lots of Filipino people in one of the places that I lived on the western side of the United States. And so, oh, and for reference, this is back when I would wear my hair bone straight. Uh, this is kind of before the natural hair movement became a thing. So I used to wear my hair very, very straight, very like silk pressed. Like it was so flat to the point where if it was freshly done, you could fool someone into thinking that my hair naturally gr grows straight. My hair is a type three. And that was also when I used to wear eyeliner. So the eyeliner that goes all the way around your eyes. And it was also when I used to wear my orange foundation. So it was like slightly darker, um, slightly warmer looking. 
And I also used to wear these big chandelier earrings because this was kind of like in the early to mid 2000s. So that's just kind of a, a reference point of how I looked. I will try to put pictures on the screen of how I feel I used to dress in terms of style or like how my hair and makeup used to look back then. So I remember sometimes there would be people of Indian descent who would start speaking in their language. Other times there would be people asking me and my brother if we're Ethiopian. So my brother's phenotype, I think my brother looks like The Weeknd. And it's funny because I actually looked up The Weeknd this morning so I could put his picture in the editing thing. And I found out The Weeknd actually is Ethiopian. So me and my brother, we would get mistaken for Ethiopian. I personally don't believe I look Ethiopian. I just think that maybe because those were the only quote unquote black people or because there was a bigger population over there. Maybe people just put me and my brother into that box. So that was something else that would happen. And also an interesting thing about the Ethiopian community, the Somali community and the Eritrean community that was kind of in my vicinity was that they were not viewed as black. They were not viewed as unambiguous African-Americans. They were not viewed the same way as like 50 Cent or like Gabrielle Union or somebody like that. So to be fair, like I said, I did grow up in a more white, very ignorant type of background in terms of like diversity. So there was not a lot of diversity at all. And so people actually would nickname the Ethiopians, Somalis, and Eritreans, they would nickname them Arab. And I know that if you have that background, you're probably going to come in here and say, oh, don't call us that nickname. Well, I mean, just being honest, that's the, that is the type of lack of diversity that I had growing up. So a lot of people would call them Arab or they were perceived as Arab. They were treated as Arab. So as far as like the negative stereotypes or racist stereotypes, you know how people naturally apply positive and negative stereotypes to you based on your ethnicity? Ethiopians, Eritreans, and Somalis did not receive the same negative stereotypes as African Americans. The negative stereotypes that they would receive were more so like, you're a cab driver. By the way, I, I know this is triggering, but those were some of the ignorant things that I heard. They would say things like they're cab drivers or they work at 7-Eleven or that they're wearing a turban or, you know, so they were perceived differently. The actual stereotypes were different. And this is why I say that I believe texturism and featurism are something that a lot of people don't want to talk about because a lot of those people had the same skin tones or darker skin tones and they were perceived differently. They still were not called black or at least in the area that I was in. So I would say when I was on the West Coast, uh, uh, featurism and texturism was more of a thing if I had to compare. Because when I think about skin tones and all the white people, you know, and the Asian people and stuff, for the most part, they didn't really know what light skin, you know, light skin black or dark skin black was. Um, for the most part, that was only something that was talked about every once in a while or in a historical context or maybe at school or something. I talked to you guys about how in my history class they talked about that, but it wasn't like this social classification because like I said, there simply were not enough African Americans to be able to compare people to the other person and be like, oh, this person is darker skin and that person's lighter. There, there wasn't enough. So I would say it was more about just your overall ethnic background, your overall race, and also your uh, features and your hair texture. And the reason I'm bringing up the hair texture thing is because I do remember a lot of people making comments about my hair texture. And also, I do think that the time period played into it as well because this was back when relaxers and um, having your hair pressed, that was back when that was popular. So the fact that my hair was long and straight, you know, that I used to wear it really straight, people would make a lot of comments on my hair as well. So I do think that like kind of the popularity of straight hair at the time also played a role. I don't remember curly hair really being in style, quote unquote. Um, I remember a lot of the girls that had curly hair, even if they were like Latin American or Filipino or something, they would often straighten their hair as well. And so... When I moved to the East Coast, it was a lot more diverse. So when I moved to the East Coast, that was the first time that I ever encountered people from the Caribbean or people with that in their background. Um, I noticed on the East Coast, people were generally more loud and proud with their heritage. Whereas when I was on the West Coast, um, it either wasn't talked about, wasn't paid attention to, 
or people would occasionally ask you like other people of color. But generally speaking, random white people, no, they may not have asked that because I happen to be in a majority white area. But on the East Coast, a lot of people were more loud and proud. Um, that was when I came across a lot more immigrants of various backgrounds. And it was so common for there to be so many different ethnic groups to the point where everybody had their own nickname. So for example, I remember working at my job I remember there was one unambiguous black lady who worked there and she was complaining about her boyfriend who was an unambiguous black man. And then um, she was talking about how they broke up and she dumped him and he left her or he didn't want to be with her. And then the guy she was talking to who was black, he was like, oh, um, was she black? Like the girl that he left you for? And she was like, eh, not really. She was Ethio. So they would use these phrases like Ethio. So once again, Ethiopians. And by the way, when I was on the East Coast, in that area that I was living in, there were tons more Ethiopians. I mean, I had never seen that many Ethiopian people in particular. So I noticed that in that city that I had lived in, the unambiguous African Americans, like the dark-skinned black people, so that woman, she looked kind of like the girl from Orange is the New Black. She had that phenotype, but she was African American. She was not, she didn't have an accent or anything like that. I noticed that there was definitely a difference between the two ethnic groups. And so people would give others the nickname Ethio. And I also remember one time when I was with my friend, she was African American from the South. Uh, we were talking about hair texture or doing our hair or something like that. And my hair was natural, it was in a curly bun. And I remember her mentioning that my hair texture does not look like an African American. I remember her mentioning that my hair texture looked Ethiopian. So I don't know what that means. I think she was probably just trying to say it's type 3. My hair texture is a type 3. So when I was on the East Coast, I noticed that Ethiopians in particular, they were definitely uh, pedestalized. And I don't know if it's because there was more of an Ethiopian community. So for example, when I was on the East Coast, I remember seeing a lot more Ethiopian restaurants. That was actually my first time trying Ethiopian food, and I really loved it, by the way. But I also remember my friend, who is an MLS woman from the South, she was talking about Ethiopian women in particular, and she was like, oh yeah, they have such pretty hair and like nice bodies, you know, they have pretty curves and stuff like that. And so I definitely remember that there was a separation between Ethiopians or that sort of phenotype, which I now know to be Somali, Eritrean. There are probably some other, oh, there was, um, there was this one guy who was from Sudan that I met. So, but he was American though, but his phenotype, uh, he did not look black whatsoever. I mean, he looked, I'll try to put up a picture. He had like wavy type two hair. So there were some people who had a background from Sudan, um, but they were like, not black or they had a very small amount of blackness to the point where they had to tell you oh yeah that's a part of my family or that's like my heritage but I definitely remember ethnic groups and ethnic stereotypes about uh, kind of like this Ethiopian phenotype so you kind of the best way I can describe it was you had kind of looser hair textures and your nose, like your facial features looked different. And so they were not classified in the same way. I don't remember any negative stereotypes about like Ethiopians in particular when I was on the East Coast. Um, but I did have that same thing though, where I would get into an Uber or something and then the guy would be Ethiopian and then he will say, are you Habesha? So I didn't know what Habesha was until me and my brother were talking about it and my mom, me and my brother and my mom were talking about it, and then we ended up finding out that that is a certain type of Ethiopian. I guess there are multiple different types. So yeah, and that was more so when my hair was curly, by the way. It wasn't as much when my hair was straightened because you couldn't see my curl pattern, but whenever I had it in a bun or something, some sort of high bun, then people would notice. Another thing that happened on the East Coast was there was definitely a lot more conversation about skin tone. Like people would give others nicknames, you know, they would say, oh, the light skinned person, oh, the dark skinned girl, the dark skinned guy. So they would say that. Um, I personally did not hear them using that term brown or brown skin. It was just more so light skinned or dark skinned. Another thing that I noticed when I was on the East Coast is a lot of people would ask me if I was Caribbean. I didn't even know that that was a thing. Um, so there was a nickname that they would give to people who were Trinidadian. They would be like, are you Trini? Or girls would say, I'm Trini. 
So I'm assuming that meant they were from Trinidad. But at that point, that was when I realized, oh, okay, so do do Caribbean people, like are some people with that background, do some of them have a different look or something? Because why do people keep on asking me this? And I will also mention that there were some white people at my job who asked me that. I remember one guy, he was like, oh, okay, so are you Caribbean or are you from the islands? And I was just like, what? I was like, no, I was like, no, I'm, I'm black. <laughs> I didn't know what, I didn't know what to say or how to answer. And I remember he started laughing. But when I was on the East coast, that was when I learned that women like Nicki Minaj and Cardi B, that was when I learned that those women had a background that was from, you know, the islands or the Caribbean or something like that. So that was when I started to realize, oh, okay. So are they associating my phenotype with these people who have kind of these different mixtures from those islands. So that was another thing. I had never heard that until I was on the East Coast and there were a lot more people from that background. Another thing that happened is I used to go to the Dominican salons and stuff like that. So I remember going with my friend who's African American. I remember us going to the salon. So it was, there was me, my African American friend and my other friend who was Nigerian. So she was African American, but she had a Nigerian background. I think her grandparents or something they came from Nigeria but I remember not only did they charge us all different prices to do our hair so I remember my price it was about so it was $25 I think to get your hair done like the silk press so my they actually they charged me more too because the baseline price was about like $25 so mine was like $30 or something and then my friends was like $35 and then my Nigerians friends hair was like $45 or something like that and I remember them trying to figure out if me and my other friend, the African-American one, were Dominican. She had kind of a lighter skin tone. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think that she had a little bit of uh, kind of that horn African in her background. So her nose and lips and stuff looked a bit different. So, But her hair was more of a type 4, like a 4A or something like that. So I remember in the Dominican salon, them trying to figure out if we were Dominican. They were speaking in Spanish. And I didn't even notice because I wasn't even listening at all. And my friend, she actually noticed and she told me, she was like, oh yeah, they were trying to figure out if we were Dominican or not. And I was like, oh. And so once again, it was more about the ethnicity. And that was also when I started to see an increase in people mentioning complexions and stuff, or they would simply associate your complexion with a certain ethnic group. So if you were light skinned, let's say you have like a Nicki Minaj phenotype then people seem to ask more questions. But they wouldn't say, I'm asking you because of your skin tone or hair texture. Sometimes people would mention the hair texture, but in terms of just asking, are you Trini or are you Dominican? No, they wouldn't say, I want to know because of your complexion. It was just more so like kind of an unspoken thing, but it was definitely increased. Like there was definitely more of a conversation around skin tone. I also remember being on the East Coast and that was also when I heard people using phrases like yellow bone, red bone. They would use those phrases regularly, like the guys in particular. Um, and usually if a guy would compliment my complexion, generally speaking, he was the same complexion as me. So I will mention that. So you know how a lot of black women, a lot of dark skinned black women, they say the dark skinned black men are colorist. Um, I'm not saying they're not because I actually do believe that a lot of dark skinned black men have a lot of internalized self hate, even worse than a lot of the dark skinned black women. But as far as my personal experience, anytime a guy would compliment my complexion or give a nickname to my complexion in a positive way, he was a man who had my complexion as well. And I remember this one light skinned guy saying, oh, I can tell you're not from around here because your skin, it's too smooth and it's like bright. So he was trying to say, I don't know if he was just trying to say I looked quote unquote exotic, but he was commenting on not just the texture of my skin being smooth because on the East Coast, um, some of the cities, depending on what city you live in, some of the cities have like very hard water or, you know, it can affect your actual skin complexion, like your, uh, the clearness of your skin. You know how you could live in an environment where there's a lot of smog or like lots of pollution and stuff. So I think he was trying to say that, but he also did mention my complexion. So that was, uh, one of the first times where men mentioning my skin tone became a regular occurrence. But like I said, in my experience, it was mainly uh, some sort of mixed race man. So maybe he was dark skin and he was mixed or he was my exact skin tone and phenotype. So it was not the norm for a bunch of unambiguous guys to make those types of comments. But then again, maybe it's because I just didn't pay attention. 
or didn't give those guys attention. So I don't know. Something else that started happening when I was on the East Coast was a lot of the girls who were from the East Coast, like maybe they're from Brooklyn or whatever, they would actually call me my skin tone name as an insult. So for example, I was called a high yellow heifer before. I thought that that was an extremely offense. I thought that was like a slave, you know, like a slave insult. I also remember a guy making slave rape jokes with me or saying like I would have been in the master's bed getting raped, you know, if it was the slave days, just a bunch of crap like that. I also remember an unambiguous girl one time, um, we were talking about family and like multiracial families and she was randomly telling me that she has a bunch of white people in her family. So I think that she was trying to get my approval or something because maybe she viewed me as being mixed race or being different. So maybe she was trying to tell me like, oh, I have so many white people in my family or like I have so many guys who married white women and they had kids who were mixed race. So I noticed a lot more of that behavior as well uh, from the black women. Another thing that I noticed on the East Coast in particular was absolutely more violence, like just more incredible visceral hatred for my phenotype. And by the way, when I was Googling this, I found out that the, uh, the largest Nigerian populations in the U.S. are New York City, Houston, and Washington, D.C. So two of those are on the East Coast. So I think depending on where you live, like what exact city and the demographics of that city, your skin tone and your ethnic background can be perceived differently. So when I was on the East Coast, there actually were a lot of black guys who had that phenotype of like Tay Diggs or somebody like that. I don't know if Tay Diggs is African, but a lot of guys, they did have that Tyrese or that Tay Diggs phenotype. Same thing with the women. A lot of the women had the phenotype of like, um, like uh, Lonnie Love or like, I'm just trying to think of random people. You know what I mean? It, an unambiguous, more of an unambiguous phenotype, meaning that when you look at them, you, you see blackness and you're not going to mistake them as anything else. But the East Coast was definitely where I started receiving more threats, uh, more people threatening to fight me. That was when people would accuse me of things that were false. Um, that was when I first experienced people accusing me of like trying to steal their boyfriend or trying to sleep with their boyfriend. I also remember in terms of hair texture, a lot of the unambiguous black guys, they would ask more questions about my hair. Like, oh, is that your real hair on your IG? It was more of an open talking point versus the West Coast where it's like you kind of don't really talk about hair or like wigs and weaves. So the whole wigs and weaves thing. Um, I would say that it was more made fun of on the West Coast in my experience. It was more made fun of. Uh, people were definitely more, I guess you could call it texturist or uh, maybe even more anti-black or more like making fun of that kind of thing versus the East Coast. People didn't necessarily make fun of it, but they would openly talk about it like, oh, is that your real hair? Or like, is that a wig? Or is that a weave? Another thing I noticed on the East Coast was I got more of those light skin feminine stereotypes or the, the feminine soft light light skin stereotype because more people would comment on my femininity. They would comment on like my clothes or if I was wearing a dress or something. Uh, a lot of people would make comments on that. So I think that could have played into the stereotypes as well. Oh, and by the way, on the West Coast, that is when I was called bougie a couple of times, like in the small black community that was there. Sometimes people would call me bougie, whereas on the East Coast, it was more like I'm conceited or some people would straight up say you're acting light skin or, oh God, here comes the queen of the light skins, you know, something like that. So it was definitely more in your face and more explicit. And I think part of it is because it was more diverse than the cities that I had been in on the West Coast, where it was kind of majority white with like some Asian people. And by the way, I think that the demographics of these coasts of the U.S. are different now probably versus when I was there. So once I went to the South, when I moved to the South, I would say that it was also just as prevalent as the East Coast. Guys would randomly bring up my skin tone. So I remember in the South, people would say things like, oh, you can really see it when I'm ashy because I'm dark skin, but you're light skin. So if you're ashy, you can't even see it. So people would say stuff like that or people would just stare at you. Like I noticed in the South, I would get lots more stares as well. I mean, people, you know how people stare at you everywhere, but I could actually tell in the South that other black people were literally staring at my skin, like literally staring at my skin tone. 
because they would be looking at my arms or my legs and then my face. And the, and I noticed they weren't necessarily looking at my body. Like this is women, by the way. So there was more of like this unspoken rivalry. And I experienced that on the East Coast as well. There were a lot more girls kind of sizing you up and stuff and looking you up and down. Um, but on the East Coast, a lot of the girls, they wouldn't just look you up and down. Some of them would straight up like insult you or threaten to fight you and stuff like that. Whereas in the South, it was more covert. And maybe I would have a few experiences where people would be mean or something. But generally speaking in the South, it seemed like people would try to be polite on the surface, but then there was like this covert jealousy or something. Another thing that I noticed in the South was definitely the whole acting light skin talking point. Like for example, let's say it's a dark skinned black girl and she says hi to a light skinned guy and he doesn't hear her and he keeps walking. Then she would be like, oh, why are you acting light skinned? You know, that sort of thing. Another thing I noticed in the South was a lot of unambiguous black people calling other black people burnt. So that was one of the first times where I literally saw direct overt colorism amongst dark-skinned black people. Like dark-skinned black women would call dark-skinned black men burnt or they would call them like black ass or something like that. So I definitely noticed more um, internalized colorism in the South against dark-skinned people as opposed to pedestalization of light-skinned people or a kind of like complimenting light-skinned people. No, it was more like straight up if you're dark-skinned people will mention it or they will um, say disparaging comments. Like other dark-skinned people would say disparaging comments, whereas on the East Coast, people were more kind of comfortable in their skin tones or they might make jokes or you might feel pedestalized or fetishized or exotified. But when I was on the East Coast, I don't remember a lot of dark-skinned people making fun of other dark-skinned people, whereas in the South, I definitely saw more dark-skinned people making fun of dark-skinned people. And then as far as my college experience, I'm not going to dox what part of the U.S. my college was in. So that's why I'm not really talking about my college experiences in this particular video. But in the South, that is also where I was called Becky with the good hair. Or like people use terms like good hair just freely. Just don't even give a fuck about what it means. Like they would literally just say, you have good hair or so-and-so has good hair. Like they don't even care. Something else that happened in terms of the South was a lot of people would stereotype me as being Creole. Um, so I never associated Creoles with a look because I didn't, I had never really been around Creoles at all um, on the East Coast or on the West Coast. And so the only Creole person I know of is Beyonce. In the South, I noticed people would ask me that more often. They would say, oh, are you Creole? Or do you have a Creole background? And I remember one time this lady at, a job she was like oh are you creole she was black by the way she was like are you creole and i was like oh no i'm not and then i was like do creoles have a certain look you know i was like low-key trolling <laughs> i was like so is there a certain look she was like yeah you just have the creole look so i don't know what that means i don't know what the quote-unquote creole look is but i also remember in the south going into different restaurants and stuff and if the restaurant was some sort of creole place then people in the restaurant would actually be nice to me. Like the owners of the restaurant who were Creoles would be nice to me. Or sometimes they would ask me, do you have a Creole background? And by the way, when I talk about these different regions of the U.S. I've lived in, I've lived in multiple different cities. I've also traveled extensively in all of these areas. So in the South and the East Coast and on the West Coast. Midwest, I don't have as much experience. So I feel like I can't really speak on it. But in the South, I did notice a separation between Creoles versus like unambiguous African Americans. I even remember some Creole people getting mad when unambiguous mono dark skinned black people would claim being Creole or when they would claim having a Creole background because other people who felt like they were kind of more Creole didn't like it when someone less Creole was claiming to be Creole. So that was something else that I also noticed in the South. Another thing I noticed with Southern people was definitely um, more competitiveness and more cattiness. I would call the South very catty. So like one of the story times I told about the pageant queen who didn't like me, that was a Southern, you know what I mean? Like I felt like she is a perfect representation of Southern culture. You know, she's, she's from the South. Um, she was like this black pageant queen. And I remember thinking like, why would an unambiguous pageant queen who literally looks like Marci Martin, who I think is very pretty, why would somebody like that be worried about me or be like jealous of me or 
feel like I'm competing. So with the Southern culture, I definitely noticed there's more of this competition, but it's almost like pick me culture where it's like, there's a competition for the male gaze. There's a competition to be seen as pretty in the eyes of black men. Another thing that I noticed in the South was fetishization or pedestalization of Hispanic backgrounds or Latin American backgrounds. A lot of people would talk about that or try to have that look with like the different wigs and weaves and all that or kind of brag about having that look or asking questions about my background and stuff. So those are some of my skin tone and ethnic experiences that have to do with the different regions of the United States I lived in. So what coast of the U.S. are you guys in? Or are you even in the United States? Are you in the Caribbean? Are you somewhere else? What has your experience been? Did you experience more prevalent colorism, texturism, or featurism in one part of the U.S. versus something else? Do you feel like the standards for light skin or dark skin were different? Because I noticed, like I said, on the West Coast, it was more like you're one dropped into blackness. Or uh, maybe I would say if you're not white passing, there was really no phrase. It wasn't like, oh, you're light-skinned. Maybe people would call a person light-skinned if they were high yellow, I guess, or more white-looking. Um, but generally speaking, in my experience, it was kind of like there was just more one-dropping or just identifying people by race and ethnicity as opposed to breaking people up based on skin tones. Whereas on the East Coast and in the South, people had no problem openly breaking people up based on skin tones or saying, oh yeah, you're African American, but you're hella light skin. Like people would literally say that. Oh, but you're hella light skin though. They would say stuff like that. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.